So your husband is, at, is making me say something that I would never say. You need to have my wife promise me right now that she's gonna move past this. Can you tell my husband one thing? Yes. I can't. <laughs> We're not getting off. We'll be here till five o'clock until you- <laughs> There's a couple of souls that I'm hearing from, and right away, I keep hearing I'm the father. <gasps> yes, you want to see him? <laughs> I want to see him. Got him cremated. All right, listen, don't scare me like that. I, I, I don't, I've seen enough of the dead. First of all, know that he's here because he kept saying to me, Matt, my daughter was talking to me. She was talking to me, Matt, saying, Dad, you got to come through, Dad. Dad, are you here? So first of all, know that that's his way of acknowledging that he's here and that he's with you. He's here for the both of you today because when I went to go and connect with your screen, he was literally sitting right between the two of you when I'm connecting. And what's so tough about this is he's telling me when I'm speaking to him about how hard it was for, for you not only to say goodbye to him, but also he's talking about the fact that you knew that there was something more that was going on with him here in this world. He says, and Matt, can you please just thank my wife for the way that she took care of me and for the way that she loved me here in this world? He wants to thank you, by the way, for keeping his jacket. He tells me about the jacket that you have of his. Yeah, we do. And he's showing me that there's sometimes, and you'll, so we'll, you'll actually wear his clothes. I wear his t-shirt. <laughs> he says to me, thank you so much for that. He goes, because she wears this and she thinks of me. He says, and Matt, I have to let my, he says, I have to let my family know that I am fine on the other side. He goes, but I got to tell you, Matt, he goes, this is a little creepy to me. He goes, because here in this world, he goes, I never really believed in mediums. He goes, I never believed that you could come through and speak like this. He goes, and my daughter was saying, there's no way dad's going to come through because he didn't, <laughs> didn't believe in this. <laughs> And you know what's funny? I don't know if he's, he's teasing me or not because I've never had like a soul tell me this, but it goes to me that, you know, I, I really still don't believe he goes, but I'm coming through just because my family's here. <laughs> That's what he says. He goes, but I, didn't, I don't believe in this type of communication. So I don't know why he's telling me that. I don't know if it was like he thought it was against his religion because <laughs> was whatever, but he's telling me this when I'm connecting with him. He's also telling me when I'm connecting with him that this man was sick before his passing here in the physical world. Yeah. And he also tells me that he was going through treatments, that he was trying to get better before he had died. Yeah. But the yeah. hardest part was, is he keeps telling me, Matt, we didn't take this as seriously as we should have, meaning that the doctors did not take this as, as seriously. You know, I feel when I'm connecting with him, infections, I feel like he kept battling constant infections that were going through him. Yeah. He's showing me all these medication bottles being lined up. And he's telling me, Matt, he says, they had me on medication after medication after medication. And he's telling me when I'm connecting with him, I should not have been home, he tells me. So did they send him home? Or was there a point when he was, when yeah. he- They because sent him home. home. They said he had a, a pulled muscle in his leg. He had a life-threatening infection in his leg. He lost his leg. He was in hospital for four months. All we had him for was two months. Please know one thing. He said to me this. He goes, Matt, he goes, if it wasn't for my wife, he goes, I wouldn't even had the chance that I had. You know, what's so crazy is you knew that, they, that he was having this issue. You knew that this was not your husband of what you were seeing. And he wants to thank you for the way that you fought for him. Because he tells me, Matt, she fought and she fought and she fought and she fought for me. He says, you fought him to get that operation. You fought him to go to the doctors. You were on the phone every day saying, you need to help my husband. You need to help my husband. Do you understand that? Yeah. He says, but you need to stop. Because he tells me, Matt, I died. He goes, and she feels like she's been trapped because literally you've been thinking about every conversation that you had with doctors, every conversation that you've had. And I'm going to tell you something that you're not going to like, but it's not from me. So please don't hold me accountable. It's from your husband. He says to me, you need to stop talking about this with our daughter. Wow. Oh. <laughs> your daughter wants to remember the happy times with her dad. She wants to remember the good, the good memories. And she says to me, you know, by you bringing up his passing, he goes, I know you're still hurting, but you're hurting her in the meantime, because she wants to move on to, from that day. She wants to move on from the day that her dad died because she senses and feels him. He goes, I want my wife to be strong and I want her to be able to move on to. He says, Matt, he goes, tell my wife that she said that if I just hear from him one time, if I know he's okay, if I know he's at peace, I can be at peace too. Went today. <laughs> you said that today. Yeah. He heard you. Why do you think he's having me tell you this? But he says to me, Matt, she needs to be at peace. Listen, 
I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. This is what your husband's telling me. He tells me you did everything that you could for him. You were on the phone every day and you can go over this a million times. You can go over his passing, what you did, what you said, what doctor you called. It's not gonna change anything. And there's nothing different that you could have done to keep your husband alive. So as hard as that is, you're torturing yourself every day thinking back to those moments. And your husband says to me, you don't deserve that. He goes, because Matt, he goes, I'm in heaven. I'm, I don't have any illness. I'm pain free. He says, I have my leg back. I'm living my best life. And I'm living my best life because I'm able to watch over them without pain, without illness. And I need them to live their life without pain and illness. The more that you think about the day that he died, the more, the more that you remain trapped there. He says, Matt, please tell my wife that I want her to be able to leave the house again. I want her to be able to go out and enjoy. Stop staying in, he tells me. <laughs> Yes. He never goes out anywhere. I know. He tells me. And you know, your husband's worried about you because he says to me, you are throwing your life away. And he said to me, not only are you throwing your life away, he says to me, but you're causing a lot of pain for our daughter. He, <gasps> says, Evan, he says, I don't want to see that. He says, I want to see the two of you live and enjoy life because the two of you have always been super close here in this world. And I don't want my death and my passing and all the terrible things that you saw divide the two of you. So your husband is at, is making me say something that I would never say. He says to me, Matt, you need to have my wife promise me right now that she's going to move past this. Can you tell my husband one thing? Yes. I can't. <laughs> you have to. He's that's why he's holding me to this. You have to promise him. We're not getting off. We'll be here till five o'clock until you. Because <laughs> he's making me say this. And I'm going to tell you this, the reason why. He says, and he goes to me, he's, he's like negotiating. Your husband's like a lawyer on the other side. He's going to be mad, negotiate with her. You tell her that if she promises, if she can make that promise that she can move past the day that I died, he goes, I promise her that I'll come to her. I'll promise her I'll send her signs. He says, I'll promise that, that I'll be a part of her life and show her that I'm there. And I promise her that we'll be together again. So can you make that promise to him? Yes, tell my husband I said yes. He says to me, listen, I know how much you love me. He says, and you're hanging on to that hurt and pain because you love him so much. He said to me, Matt, please let her know she fought for me, my body just gave out and she can't hold herself in prison because of that. <laughs> he says, so Matt, tell her to enjoy the holidays. Tell her to enjoy celebrations. Tell her to please start living life he says, because my main concern is her. The same way that you took care of your, your husband every single day, you called doctors, you checked up on him every day when he was sick. He says, I'm checking up on you now. I'm in that house every day with you. He says, and I don't like what I'm seeing. There's more to your life than sitting at home. There's more to your life than being sad. And there's more to your life than being depressed. He says, you need to get better and you need to do it for us because I'm still your husband, even though I died. And I still love and care, care about you because I actually care about you more he says, than I even did here in this world, if that's even possible, he said. <laughs> well, listen, I'm really hoping that this makes tomorrow so much easier for you. It's going to take a little bit, but this is just validation that your husband is here, that he's with you, and more importantly, that he is safe and at peace on the other side. <sighs> I'm going to leave you with that.